Man's earliest building materials were sourced from nature. Neanderthals built shelters from the bones and tusks of woolly mammoths. Usually when the mammoth had finished with them. Uh -oh. For thousands of years, Mongolian nomads have used sheep wool to line the walls of their yurts. Although not everyone's happy about it. From the time of ancient civilizations, many houses have been built with straw and clay bricks. Reinforced with a touch of animal dung, which works perfectly if you're standing in the right place. Ugh. But to create a truly enduring structure, engineers at Mio would look to the work of a pioneering British civil engineer a quarter of a millennia earlier. Professor Luke Bisbee is taking a trip into the English Channel, one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, to find out more. I'm heading out to the Eddy Stone, one of the most treacherous rocks in the English Channel. And it's a place that arguably marks one of the most important moments in civil engineering history. Today sits a 50-meter-tall lighthouse designed by James Douglas in 1882. Amazingly, this is the fourth lighthouse that stood in this spot. Twenty-two kilometers from the busy port of Plymouth, over the centuries, the Eddystone Rock has sunk countless ships. As maritime trade increased in the 17th century, it was ordered that a beacon of light be built on top. A building that can withstand the elements out here, the pounding of the waves day after day and the wind and the rain, requires a real engineering achievement. In 1696, it was Henry Winstanley who completed the world's first offshore lighthouse, a 25-metre wooden tower. But seven years later, it was obliterated by a storm. Its replacement survived 47 years, until being destroyed in a fire. And if a lighthouse was going to last any substantial amount of time out here, a new engineering solution was needed. In 1756, this seemingly impossible challenge fell to engineer John Smeaton. He believed that the sea must give way to the building and decided to build a lighthouse made of stone. But it was how he joined the stones together that was truly revolutionary and earned him the title the father of civil engineering. Smeaton's original lighthouse stood on this spot for over 120 years. And in fact, we can still see the bottom half of it as that stump of a lighthouse over there. The structure had been so strong, it was only cracks in the rocks that it sat on that forced engineers to dismantle the lighthouse and later rebuild it on Plymouth Hoe in homage to Smeaton's genius. And the secret of its success had been an innovative bonding material that could survive the constant pounding of the sea. Smeaton experimented with mixtures of lime, clay, and iron slag to create hydraulic lime. And I'm going to try to demonstrate the innovation that Smeaton accomplished at the tower. Here we have a traditional cob mortar. This is a mixture of sand and clay and straw and lime and a bit of earth. And these types of mortars were used traditionally for many hundreds and thousands of years. And the other material that I have here is Smeaton's mixture. Smeaton's hydraulic lime is formed inside a cardboard tube before being placed in water, replicating the rigors of the sea. And then I'm also going to do the same with the traditional earth mixture. Got both tubes now filled with the mortar. We're going to go away for about a half an hour, and then we're going to come back, and hopefully we'll see a pretty dramatic difference in terms of how they've performed. First, we're going to look at the tube that's filled with the traditional mud mortar. We're going to see exactly how much it's set. And you can see absolutely nothing. This is the one we're much more interested in. This is the one with the mortar that's based on the hydraulic lime technology that Smeaton came up with. 
I can immediately feel that this one is much more solid. I squeeze it, nothing happens. If I have a look inside, I can actually see this now is very, very solid. That combination of setting very quickly and setting underwater completely revolutionized civil engineering. What Smeaton had created was the precursor to Portland cement. Portland cement's the key ingredient in all modern concrete. The strength of Smeaton's hydraulic lime allowed engineers to dovetail together nearly 1,500 blocks of granite, creating a rock-solid structure that would stand up against the forces of nature. So solid, in fact, the Victorians found it too difficult to dismantle the base when it was finally relocated to Plymouth Hoe over 100 years ago. So here we have the original 250-year-old granite blocks reassembled here on Plymouth Hoe with mortar, much like the original mortar. Incredible that it still looks so good. And if I look really carefully, way out there on the horizon, I can just see the base of Smeaton's original tower standing next to the new tower. This was really the game changer in concrete engineering worldwide. <laughs>